Welcome to the Wall Street Lab podcast, where we interview top financial professionals and deconstruct their practices to give you an insider look into the world of finance. In one of the lectures, you talk about Peter Thiel, how competition is for losers. You often talk about finding monopolists, the 100 beggars and the great returns. And to find great compounders, this really reminds me of the venture capital and private equity business, because I also talk with a lot of venture capitalists and their investment approach seems on the outset very similar. They try to find a company with a moat and then fund that to the next stage. Did you ever think about investing into the private markets or was it always for the public markets? The venture capital game is a much more difficult game. It's a very hard game. And in fact, it shows up because I think the guy at Yale had written about it in his book. If you look at the top quartile bond fund managers and the bottom quartile bond fund managers, you would make almost no difference in returns between them. You know, hundreds of basis points or tens of basis points difference in annualized returns, almost non-existent. And there's no correlation. If you are in the top quarter in one quarter, and you're at the bottom in the next, and you're in the third, and you're in the last, and so on. As an investor, you could throw a dart and pick a bond fund manager and you will not hurt yourself. Okay. In the venture capital business, there's a night and day difference between top and bottom quartile. So Sequoia Fund has been not just top quartile, they've been top 5%, top 3% for decades. And I have a number of investors from Silicon Valley who are venture capitalists who have invested in my fund. And when I talk to them, you know, they'll say to me, look, if we had access to Sequoia's garbage can, the stuff that they've turned down, our analyzed returns would triple. In the venture business, a big part of the issue is the deal flow. What deals are coming to you? And so brand drives deals. So... Anderson Hor Horowitz or Y Combinator or Sequoia, all these brand names, they're going to see the deals, okay? And if you're some Mickey Mouse venture capitalist who's put up a shingle and opened a shop, whatever deals come to you, trust me, 300 other people have turned it down before it's come to you. You are the 301st person looking at it. And so that's your universe to pick from. And the results are going to... So I think there are two issues. With venture capital, one is the deal flow is a very big deal, and you're not going to be able to just get the deal flow. The second is, obviously, place like Sequoia or Anderson Horowitz, et cetera, they've got great DNA. So not only are they seeing the deal flow, they actually have some expertise in sifting through what might be good or not so good. And then I think the biggest issue with venture capital is there are no trademarks. So when I look at businesses, if I look at a Starbucks or I look at Chipotle or I look at Mao Tai or Ferrari, there's a lot of trend marks, right? And there's a lot of history in those businesses and we can make bets based on that history. Here, how are you going to tell the difference between Theranos and Apple? Okay, they're both wearing turtlenecks. How are you going to tell the difference? And one's blonde, so you might go for the blonde. You might go for the blonde versus Steve Jobs. I think that the trademarks are not there. And so you're forced to make decisions with very little history and data. You can tell if somebody has a great business model. You might buy into the business model. But then they may have no execution abilities. Okay, Or they can execute, but the business model is wrong and they're not willing to change it. So there's so many different variables that come in that I don't think it's a game I would be good at.